Hello, everyone. My name is Chen Anzhu. I come from the Gaoling School of Artificial Intelligence, Renmin University of China. Here, I will give the report of the paper titled "Learning Explicit User Interest Boundary for Recommendation." The core objective of the recommendation system from implicit feedback is to minimize the score gap between positive samples and negative samples, which can be roughly classified into pointwise loss and pairwise loss. The pointwise loss fit each sample with its label individually, which is flexible in weighting and sampling on instance level, but ignores the inherent ranking property. By maximizing the score gap between positive samples and negative samples, the pairwise loss can capture the ranking of samples naturally, but suffer from training efficiency. Additionally, both losses are hard to explicitly provide a personalized decision boundary to determine whether the users are interested in items unseen. Thus. We propose a hybrid loss of the pointwise and the pairwise to combine the advantages of both, and introduce an auxiliary score for each user to represent the user interest boundary, named UIB. Here is our hybrid loss with the explicit user interest boundary. BU is the user interest boundary. Which is the metric transform on the user's embedding P U of the user U. The loss expects the positive sample score are higher than B U, and the negative sample score are lower than B U. In the training stage, the loss aims to individually penalize samples that cross the boundary with pairwise paradigms. The pair penalize the samples. Are the positive samples whose score is lower than BU, and the negative samples whose score is higher than BU. Our approach can be regarded as the hybrid loss of pointwise and the pairwise. In the whole loss expression, it follows the pointwise loss because the positive samples and the negative samples are calculated separately in LP and LN. On the other hand, Inside the LP and LN, each sample is applied the pairwise loss with the auxiliary score BU. Here, alpha is the hyperparameter to balance the contribution weights of the positive and negative samples. The existing <laughs> methods usually suffer from the gradient vanishing problem, where those selected samples are too easy to be Classified correctly and are unable to produce an effective gradient to update models. Our hybrid loss can alleviate the gradient vanishing problem. Given an example in this figure, there are three positive examples: S1, S2, S3, and three negative samples: S4, S5, and S6. For the pairwise loss. Nine pair training instances are generalized by the combination of any two positive and negative samples, but only the pair S two, S five can provide effective gradient information to update the model. That's one ninth probability. For our hybrid loss, six pair training instances are generalized. By positive and negative samples paired with the boundary BU, one third are effective. That's S five with BU and BU with S two. Formally, that a dataset contains n positive samples, n negative samples, and m effective pairs of all possible combination results. For the pairwise loss, the m n Squared probability of pairs can provide effective gradient information, while our hybrid loss has m divided n probability can be achieved. Hence, our approach is more efficient and significantly alleviates the gradient vanishing problem.
The other advantage of our model can balance the gradient information of negative and positive samples in training stage. As our loss optimizes Ln and Lp individually on the whole expression, we can assign a proper alpha and develop different sampling strategy to balance classes of positive and negative samples. That's adjusting alpha to enlarge or reduce the scoring space of positive and negative samples. For example, amplifying Ln by increasing alpha will push the boundary upward. With the boundary driven up, all positive samples obtain a larger upward gradient by large LP and gather into a more compact scoring space. Conversely, the same is true for reducing alpha. In order to evaluate the performance of each model comprehensively, we select four available datasets including Amazon Instant Video AIV, LastFM, MovieLens 1M, and MovieLens 10M. Comparing our boosted versions and the baselines on all, metric, on all datasets, our approach works well for all datasets to improve the model even if in the larger movie lens 10M dataset. It confirms that our model successfully uses the UIB to improve the prediction performance on the recommendation task. It especially compared to the state-of-the-art model light GCN with complicatedly feature encoding. Our light GCN plus UIB achieves improvement on all metrics which suggests our approach also works on the deep learning models. To determine how well the boundary matches the user's interest scope, in the last figure, we evaluate whether different users have different interests. We visualize the learned boundary distributions of NCF plus UIB on four datasets and show our model matches the different boundaries for different users in the form of different normal distributions. In the red figure, we evaluate whether the matched boundary is the best value. We add an extra offset between minus 5 and plus 5 with interval 1 on the BU and make, this, make predictions on all items for users. The experimental results show that reducing offset consistently increases recall and reduces accuracy, and vice versa. When the offset is zero, F1 that considers both precision and recall performance best, which shows that our method can learn the best boundary matching the user's interest scope. The left figure shows the ability of our approach to improve training efficiency and alleviate the gradient vanishing problem. The x-axis is the approach through training, while the y-axis is the corrupted rate, which is regarded as the number of samples providing the gradient information. We can observe that the gravity reach in our model that the red line is higher than that in pairwise loss on all data sets. Moreover, in our model, the hyperparameter alpha is introduced to balance the contributions of positive and negative samples. The right figure investigates how does the alpha affect the behavior of our model. The experiment shows that along with the growth of alpha, Boundary BU consistently increases. Correspondingly, the positive sample scroll space is compressed and the negative sample scroll dis distribution is increasing. Similar phenomenon is also observed on other datasets. In summary, in this paper, we propose a normal hybrid loss to combine and complement the pointwise and pairwise losses which also provide an efficient and effective boundary to match users' interest scope. Okay, that's all. Thank you.